So again, welcome back everyone to the track two of API testing summit 2021. Uh, we had two really nice uh, keynote sessions earlier and we will be starting with our track two now. As a part of our track two first session, uh, we'll be having Raghav with us. Raghav, I hope you are there. Yes, Ritu Raj, I am here. Hi Raghav, uh, I would like to welcome you to API Summit 2021. Uh, just to give a brief introduction about Raghav. Uh, Raghav Pal, he is a well-known figure when it comes to uh, automation step by step. Uh, he is going to speak about the topic web services architecture for beginners, SOAP and REST. He's the founder of automation step by step a one stop platform for anyone who wants to learn automation and devops in a very basic simple straightforward step by step manner in fact uh, i am one of the followers for his youtube channel i recently watched one of your videos related to how one can get started with uh, something in devops so he is an experienced automation architect and has led multiple teams of automation and devops engineers and delivered multiple automation testing projects you can uh, get connected with him on LinkedIn or you can also see his speaker profile details at this particular site. So with this introduction, I would like to hand it over to Raghav. Uh, Raghav, once again, welcome and then please feel free to share your screen and then we can get started. Welcome again. Uh, thanks, Ritu Raj. Thanks for your kind words. And, and uh, I think we can straight away start with the session. I will yeah. share my screen. All right, I hope all of you can see my screen. Yeah, we can. All right, great. So uh, this session is going to be a very uh, basic session on APIs and web services. And uh, I believe a lot of you know about APIs or have heard the term APIs. These days, uh, APIs are used everywhere, and when we talk about API testing, it is again a very hot skill these days. It is very much in demand. So today, we are going to uh, learn from scratch what exactly is an API and what exactly is a web service. And I will start from very scratch, and uh, we will also have a Q&A session on that. So let me start by what is an API? So API is a kind of an intermediary between two applications that allow two applications to talk to each other. So you can think of APIs as you have two applications. One of these uh, can be a, a server and one of these can be a client. So let us say application one wants to talk to application two. In that case, application one will send a request to application two and the second application will respond back with a response. So this communication between two application, that is the request and response, this takes place with the help of APIs. And when we talk, when we say web services, so web services is kind of a API which is available over the web. So in very simple terms, we can understand web services as APIs or the services available over the web and it also helps in the communication between two applications all right so uh, let us say uh, let's just say take an example i want to check for flights uh, between uh, delhi to mumbai so if i search for that i will get so many websites so many applications that can show me all the flights available between these two uh, places. So let us say I have uh, I have gone to makemytrip.com and if you can see on your screen, I have got a result with so many options. So we have Indigo, Gopher, SpiceJet, Air India, and we have uh, all these Air India and SpiceJet. All these airlines are here. All right. So here. You can see all the flights data, their schedule, 
uh, their prices, the availability of the seats. Everything is available on this one website that is makemytrip.com. And in this case, if you see, if I take an example, let us say here. Uh, if I take this example, we have this application called Make My Trip, and then we have all these other applications. We have Indigo, this flight application, then we have Air India, then we have SpiceJet, and let us say we also can have other flights like Air Asia. And here, the communication takes place between these two applications. That is, the MMT application uh, sends a request to Indigo application, and the Indigo application or the website sends back a response with all the data of its flights. And the same thing happens with all the other applications. So this is a central application that sends a request to all these flight applications, and it gets back the response. Now, in this case, uh, there is we need a medium so that this communication can take place. And one of the ways this communication can take place is the MMT application or the travel application has access to the database of all these flight applications. Now that cannot be practical and also that will not be a very secure way. So uh, here, no airline applications will allow any third party to access its database or information without uh, you know a, a direct access to any of its information so that is not a that is not a possibility here the other possibility can be the airline applications can dump their data at some particular location all the public data they can dump at a particular location and from there the travel applications can get access of the data and can show it on their websites. Now, in this case, even that cannot be a possibility because uh, we need a real time data here. Suppose I try to book a ticket on MMT and I want to go, I want to book a ticket on Indigo and it shows me available. I start booking and just at that time, uh, it gets cancelled or the availability is full from the back end and then there will be a lot of chaos. So we need real time data, real, uh, you know, uh, a very direct data without having any kind of lag. So in this case, in these kind of things, we can make use of APIs or web services where the flight applications, all these flight applications can provide a API to these third party and it can also provide some authentication and authorization. And with the help of APIs, the travel application can get access to the real time data. So here, we learned that APIs or web services enable communication between two applications. And here, one of the applications can be a service provider or a server. And here, the service provider or the server is the application that develops or implements the application or the web service and makes it available over the web. So in the example we just saw here, it can be the flight applications which provide the service and then we need a consumer or the client and the client sends the request and then the service provider sends back the response and this is how in a very, very basic way the API model works. And here to enable this communication, we need a medium and we need a format. So medium can be the HTTP medium or any network and the format can be XML, JSON or any other format. And we will learn uh, these different formats or what all these different formats are used in SOAP and REST. So these are the basic uh, formats and medium that we use for API communication. Now, if you take a very simple example, while you are speaking to your friend over your telephone, in that case, the medium is the phone and the format is the common language that can be an English language that both of you can understand. So we need a common format that both the applications can understand and a medium. So in the same way in API world as well, we need a medium and a format. All right. 
So we have we can implement web services in two ways. One is SOAP that is simple object access protocol. Here the medium is HTTP and we mostly use the post method of HTTP and the format is mostly XML. So this is the common format used in SOAP web services and then we have rest which is representational state transfer. Here again the medium is HTTP and here we can use any HTTP method like post, get, put, delete, patch, etc. And format can be XML, JSON, text, and or anything. So here we we have much more flexibility. So these are the two ways in which APIs or web services are implemented so that they can enable communication between two applications. Now, in the API world or the web services world, the consumer needs to know what are the web services, uh, what are the request, what are the structure, what's the structure, what are the parameters, etc. And for that, the server makes the web service available. And for that, it uses a XML based interface and it is called as WSDL or Web Services Description Language. So you must have heard uh, in APIs, especially in SOAP, we have a term called WSDL. It is the XML based uh, interface where we have the complete information about the service and we can parse this particular XML document and can get access to all the APIs, all the requests of that particular web service. Okay. Now, when we talk about SOAP web service, so any web service that complies with the SOAP web service specifications is called a SOAP web service. Now we have two questions here. What are these standards or what are these specifications and who defines or dictates these standards? So here for the second question, who defines and dictates these standards? We have a central body called World Wide Web Consortium or W3C. It is an international community that develops the open standards for World Wide Web and it is the community or the body that dictates the standards for SOAP web services. And when we talk about what exactly are these specifications, then here we have basic and extended set of specifications. The basic set says that it should follow the SOAP protocol, WSTL, UDDI, and then there are some more uh, specifications for security policy interface etc let us go to the basic set and see what exactly it is so here we say that for a soap web service it should follow so let me also show you that today we have uh, two versions we have soap 1.1 and 1.2 and since SOAP version 1.2, the expansion that is simple object access protocol is discontinued. However, we still use the acronym that is SOAP. So here, uh, the SOAP specification says that all the communication between the service provider and the service consumer takes place with an XML format. So if you look at any of the SOAP web service, you will see an XML format for the request and response. And it is not just any XML format. There is a particular structure to it. So it has a defined structure called SOAP message and the structure says it should consist of an envelope header and a body. If I just show you an example. Let me show you an example here. I will go to any uh, a uh, web service on the internet. Let us go to this calculator web service. And here. So this web service is a SOAP web service and you can see it has uh, all these services or requests addition, divide, subtraction, multiplication. All this you can see in this calculator web service. And if I go to this service description. This is actually the WSTL or web services description language that we just learned and I can actually parse this and get hold of all the requests and services. So if I'd use some tool, I have this 
uh, WSTL browser here. And it shows me all these services. If I go to the add service, you can see this is the request for the addition API of this service. You can see it is a XML format. It starts with the envelope and then they should be they can be a header header is optional. You can have all your authentication and metadata in the headers and then they should be a body in the body. We have these two integers where we can give our two integers and can get the addition of these two integers. So we have envelope header and body and this is how the structure looks like. Now they should always be an envelope and it is the root element and the basic unit of XML document. And then the header element provides information about the message itself. It can include some authentication, username, password, etc. And this is optional, as I said. And then there should be a body which will contain the actual data or the actual request. So this is the structure and you can see an example on your screen. This is how a SOAP message looks like. And this is how the communication happens over a SOAP API. We have this kind of a request where we can uh, give all our parameters. Like in this case, it is having parameters like first name, last name, uh, city, etc. And it will create an uh, employee or a user with all these details. So here for the SOAP web service, we have a web service that complies to the SOAP web service specifications and it should uh, have all the communication should happen over an XML format and it is it, it is called a SOAP message which has a defined XML format with an envelope header and body. So these this is what we call as SOAP web services. Now let's come to REST web services. When we talk about REST, so here we have already seen that we have two ways of implementing the web services SOAP and REST and in REST. So this is the basic structure remains the same even in REST. We have a client and a server, a service provider and a service consumer and we have request and response format. Now the RESTful architecture says that a web services or a web service that communicates between two application using the REST principles or the REST architecture is called a RESTful web service. So we have to understand what is REST and what rules should a web service follow to become a RESTful web service. So here, we know that REST stands for representational state transfer, which is an architectural style. Now we learned SOAP was a specification, a set of rules and protocols. However, REST is a style of designing or an architectural style, uh, architectural style. And here we define some uh, principles or some uh, constraints that should be followed while designing a web service. And if we follow all these principles, what we get is a RESTful web service. So it is as simple as that. If you design a web service using the architectural principles of RESTful web service, you will get a RESTful web service. Now, what are these constants? We have uniform interface, statelessness, cacheable, layered system, code on demand. So uniform interface says everything is a resource. It should have a uniform re resource identifier. Um, all the communication makes explicit use of HTTP methods like get, post, put, delete, etc. All the server and client communications are stateless. Caching can happen at the client side and it is not necessary that it will always happen at the server side. We can have multiple layers which can also act as proxies or gateways. And then uh, we have the ability to run some code on demand on the client side itself. So all these are the principles of the REST architecture. All right. So let us understand this. It says everything is a resource. Let us say I want to uh, create a service for employment management system. So here if I design a service or if I create a uh, application or module for employee management system, it will have some modules like employees and it can have some parameters like employee ID, name, etc. It can have other modules like departments. It can also have parameters like ID, name, etc. And similarly, we can have other modules. Now 
the rest principle says everything is a resource so i will have to uh, use all these resources so that i can access the modules so here employees can become a resource departments can become a resource and similarly all the modules can become a resource all right and then we also need a uri or a uniform resource identifier so any resource or data can be accessed by a uri so suppose i host this service on a server called example.com so when i say example.com forward slash employees i should get access to the employees resource and when i say forward slash employees forward slash id like forward slash 10 i should be able to get the details of employee with id 10. similarly when i say forward slash departments i will access the department's resource and then to get details of a particular department i can use that id forward slash departments forward slash the id of the department to get hold of the department so suppose you have to get a list of employees from a particular department in that case the uri will be i can say forward slash departments and then the id of the department and then forward slash employees so all this can have one to one one to many many to many uh, links and communications and as you have developed or designed the web service in the same way we can also access all this using the uri so this is how the restful web service work and roy fielding who created rest says that the key abstraction of information in rest is a resource any information that can be named can be a resource so there is no uh, nothing mandatory here that what should be exposed as a resource and what cannot be used as a resource anything that you can name and anything that you want to expose as a resource you can name it and expose as a resource in rest and of course it makes use of http methods for example get post put delete etc so now if i have to get or fetch the information of employee i can use get to the uri and uh, get is used for reading or accessing post is used for creating put is used for update delete is used to remove the resource all the crude operations so here when i use the http get method on the uri forward slash employees i will get all the details of the employees resource and then if i want to get the details of a particular employee i can use get on that particular employee id so this is how rest works if you see all the resources are usually nouns and the http methods are verbs and this is how we make the designing of a restful web service in a very very basic way so we have already seen this we use all these get post put delete and these are verbs and all the resources employees departments users etc are noun here so in rest you will not see something like get employees you will see only the employees resource when you use the get http method it will access the information of the employees or the particular employee id so you can see the difference when we use soap to get the information of a particular employee we have to follow all the uh, specifications we have to use a soap message the special xml format however in rest the same thing will look something like this we just have to use the uri and say forward slash one two three so rest is much more flexible and easier to implement so we know rest stands for representational state transfer and here a resource representation is transferred between the server and the client so what does this actually mean suppose you have to get the images resource and you have to get the image with the id1 you can say i want to get the images resource with id1 and i will accept the jpg format so in that case you will get the jpeg format or the representation of the resource when you say that i want to again get the same resource however this time i want to see the xml representation you will get the xml representation of the resource and that is why it is called as representational state transfer so this is how the representation can be xml json html yaml or any other 
uh, representation or format that the developer has uh, created or has given access to. So this is what we call as REST or representational state transfer. And this was a very, very basic uh, introduction to SOAP and REST. How do we implement what exactly this means? What is the basic structure, the basic architecture of SOAP and REST? And with this, I have completed the uh, presentation and we are open to questions. If you have any questions, uh, we can take the questions now. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh... Raghav and then yeah, we are open to take any questions. So if anyone has any questions, yes. then please. Uh, Suraj, I would ask uh, Raghav wonderfully yeah. explained. It is a beginner session very nicely explained. I was very impressed by the way that you actually gave very good explanation about soap and then explain the difference between soap and rest. Now the question that comes to our mind is that uh, when we talk about uh, between soap and uh, rest, Soap was very popular at one time and everybody was using soap and now uh, I think people have moved towards rest. Is there a specific reason that you can tell to the audience? Uh, yes, Aditya, so uh, uh, you are right. We have seen this uh, shift in the recent years. Uh, you know, when I started with uh, working with APIs, it was, you know, back in 2013 and it was SOAP was very popular. I created a complete automation framework on SOAP APIs and uh, then REST picked up and today we see REST all over. So few reasons uh, that REST is becoming popular and is widely used nowadays is. So as we have seen in the presentation, SOAP is kind of a rigid structure. We have to follow some uh, specifications and if you miss on any of the specifications, uh, your web service will not be called as a SOAP web service. So we have seen all these uh, specifications and rules laid out by W3C that you know it should follow uh, WSTL, UDDI, the, the SOAP message itself needs to be uh, have a specific XML format with envelope header and body. So it was kind of very rigid, uh, whereas when we look at REST, uh, you can see it is much more flexible. So Roy Fielding, who created REST, uh, gave the complete uh, freedom to the developer of the web service, howsoever he wants to expose the resources, whatever information he wants to expose, he can do that. He can, uh, you know, users can get uh, any information that is uh, available and um, they have to just, you know, have a link for the URI for that particular service or the module and along with that ID, they can access the resources and then the methods, HTTP methods, anything that you can use for HTTP, you can use for REST. So it is not like we always have to use an HTTP post and then the uh, uh, format is also uh, kind of restricted to XML or something like that. Anything that the creator of the application wants to use, XML, JSON, YAML, even images that can be a resource here. So uh, all this flexibility, all the you know ease of use has made REST much more popular. Thank you so much, Raghav. Now another question if there's no one uh, else. Uh, Ritraj, is there any question or otherwise I can quickly ask? There is, there is one where uh, Mohammed is asking that which one will be more preferred to learn and which one works faster uh, with the REST or SOAP? OK, so uh, which one will be more preferred to learn if you have no specific uh, kind of need in your organization or you know whatever you are implementing, then I would say maybe you can start with REST because it is uh, becoming more popular, more widely used than SOAP these days. Uh, even if you are trying to learn API or web services, from the job perspective, even then you will say, you can say that rest will be something you can learn earlier than soap uh, and also it, it is much more easier. So you know you uh, I hope you, you got an initial idea of how rest and soap started and how it is implemented the basic architecture and then uh, you can if you if you want to the development side, then of course there's a different track, but if you want to go on the testing side, Again, you will find lots of uh, resources, tools, platforms, free and paid that you can use for learning REST and it is uh, very straightforward. Okay. 
good. Uh, um, anyone can I ask else? Yeah, one yeah, 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 please go ahead. So, so Raghav, when with reference to uh, soap and with reference to rest, rest uh, we have uh, probably used a lot of tools like rest assured. We have used tools like Postman, and we have also used. Uh, there are many tools that are popular today. Uh, with reference to soap, uh, any specific suggestion that probably people can use, uh, which comes to your mind? Yeah, so for soap, uh, soap UI is much more uh, very popular. Soap UI has a free version and uh, a paid version as well. Um, Ready API is kind of an extension of soap UI. Uh, then even for Postman, you uh, we know that Postman is mostly used for REST. But if you want to use it for SOAP APIs, still you can use it. Uh, you know, I have implemented SOAP using Postman as well, so you can use Postman also. Uh, then um, there are other tools like Catalon Studio is there, Test Project is there. Uh, then we have uh, we have so many other new tools coming in the market for both SOAP and REST. Uh, we have. Uh, 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 there, there, there was a tool which I, you know, we recently worked, which says we rest. Now again, we, we rest, as the name suggests, it is a uh, kind of for rest, but again, uh, it has very good options for soap as well. So we have soap UI, we have uh, Catalon Studio, we have Postman. All this we can use for soap web services. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Raghav, I have a question. So what is the main difference between private and public APIs? OK, so uh, the private and public APIs, uh, the main difference is, uh, as the name suggests, that the APIs which are private, that means that they are not publicly available. So I just showed you an example here. So this was a calculator web service, and you can see here it has exposed all its services at divide, multiply, subtract here. So this is a public API because I need not have to use any kind of authentication. Even if you see the structure of the add API here, you will not see any kind of authorization or any kind of uh, you know uh, token in, involved or passcode involved here. So these are public APIs. When we have APIs which are not public or open to everyone and you need a some kind of authorization it can be oauth username password basic authentication all these are the private apis thank you okay good we do have one yeah and where is yeah. probably you can yeah. go ahead yeah yeah Raghav. hi uh, actually i had uh, just one question like uh, are there any other uh, like apis as well like uh, apart from uh, soap and uh, rest like i i guess there is one graphql api which is also like uh, so yeah so Anwar, uh, basically we have uh, soap and rest which is like most widely used most widely implemented uh, we have, uh, you know, different uh, other APIs as well. So API in itself is a very broad term, and it is not even necessary that you'd use a network for the communication when we talk about APIs. So, you know, somebody can create APIs, and then they can have the communication within their own um, platforms and services without even going over the web. When we call talk about web services, then of course we have mostly uh, soap and rest what we normally use. GraphQL QL is something uh, you know even I have heard a lot of times, but I do not have a lot of idea. I need to you know check on that. But yeah, uh, when we talk about services over the web or the web services, soap and rest is what we normally use. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. OK, thank you. One last question, probably a quick one before we jump into the next session. Uh, Srishti Sush is asking you about, is it necessary to learn SOAP during this time, especially if we are getting more exposed to the REST APIs, RESTful APIs, yeah? Uh, yeah, so see, uh, it depends on you uh, uh, or you, the need you have. If you see the need of uh, you know, learning SOAP, then of course you can go for it. And otherwise as well, so SOAP and REST both are very easy. And when you, when you start learning SOAP and REST, maybe if you are learning SOAP and REST or you are learning SOAP and REST testing, 
uh, they are very straightforward. As I told you that uh, there are some differences in the structure and the ways these two web services are implemented. So that is the basic thing. However, if you have to learn, if you are learning for kind of uh, doing the testing with APIs and web services, you can always go for SOAP. SOAP is still in demand and uh, you know, uh, in a lot of organizations, they prefer SOAP over REST, maybe because of some security concerns. But yeah, if you have to learn, uh, if you if you have no choice, uh, if you have no particular uh, uh, specification or if you have no particular need and if you just want to learn for your own interest, I will say that maybe you can start with REST, which is kind of uh, very straightforward. But of course, you can learn SOAP as well. So it is not like, you know, SOAP is out of the market or it is not used. It is very much used these days as well. So you can learn SOAP. It is also, uh, you know, very easy when you start learning SOAP uh, or SOAP API testing. Yeah, makes sense. Perfect. OK, so I think we are on time and. Uh, let me share my screen again. OK, so this is the feedback URL uh, where you can submit your feedback for Raghav's session, and I would really like to give a big thanks to you, Raghav, for uh, being with us today and sharing those wonderful insights which you shared with all of us. So thank you so much. And